Hello everyone, welcome to episode 19. Uh, this is the last episode with Professor Fikri Abizidan. Uh, as you know, in the, the last couple of weeks we were uh, discussing the fundamentals of research in medicine and uh, Professor Fikri Abizidan were sharing his 40 years experience in research. Uh, so far, uh, we, we, we actually touched many different topics, uh, such as what makes a doctor a good researcher, understanding and applying the authorship, and uh, collecting the data, analyzing the data, writing your manuscript, submitting your manuscript. There are many, many uh, steps actually we uh, touched during this uh, interview. And today, uh, I just want to ask Professor about the submitted, we answered the questions or comments of the reviewers, and let's say the paper is accepted. So, what is next? Yeah, Prof, uh, Arif, I think, uh, of course, uh, acceptance may not take one, uh, one uh, round, it may take up to four rounds. You know, the, la the largest I had four rounds. And uh, so they come to you and you, can, you keep up, keep up, don't, uh, don't uh, lose energy. The other thing, if they give you a chance to reject and resubmit, my advice always to try and hard. As, and most of the time, those who re reject and resubmit were accepted in my, in, my, in my condition and experience, but they need more work, but you do that. And then finally, if, if an, a reviewer is, int editor is interested, rarely, in my whole career, I think twice it was minor revision and rejected because of the change of the editor. Oh, oh. Sometimes uh, you get a paper uh, uh, accepted. I had even a paper accepted and then it was rejected by the their editor because it was changed and then it was part of a promotion of uh, one of our associate professors here and they have to write to the editor that, I mean, this is not ethical. He has already submitted his promotion. How can you? And then they pulled the rejection and they accepted it. So changing the editor is the commonest reason because he's young, he's energetic, he wants to show and he disagrees as, as usual and you may get a paper accepted and then pulled up. The acceptance oh, it's happened it's with me about twice, yeah. twice. But it's unusual. I, I told him never, never, never say the paper is accepted until, you it's, see on the <laughs> until it's published. And I tell you this from yes. my experience, people get surprised, yes? Uh, I mean, sometimes the editor changes and he wants to have another policy and they, it didn't yet be published, but I don't, I think they should, they, because there is no obligation from them to accept the paper, even if it's accepted uh, uh, editorially, it's the decision of the editor at the end. Yeah. Now you got the acceptance, you got the letter of acceptance, you are happy, and if it's so good, I advise you this, do this thing because if you work as a team, you want to raise the spirit of the team. So it's a very good paper. You go to the restaurant with them or you to the <laughs> cafe because you want to feel uh, the group of, uh, to, to work <laughs> for the next step because success brings success. Arif. Now, you have nothing to do till they send you the uh, proofs. Now, usually the, 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 the journals now, they want all the requirements before you submit. Now what's good is that usually if it's accepted, they tell you this statement, and please notice that, Arif, the paper is scientifically accepted, but not officially unless we accept it technically. Yeah. Uh, so it's a provisional acceptance, and that's very, very tricky. Why? Because at the last stage, they look into the details, the importance of this. Yeah. Then once you do that, <coughs> they're happy, the journal will have their editorial style. And they send you the PDF, for approval. Yeah. It varies. Now, some of the open access journals, 10 days, two weeks, which is very quick. Yeah. Some of the journals still now, they may need, take up to six months, depending yeah. on their ability. So you just wait. Once you get the PDF, usually the PDF has to be answered in less than 48 hours, 72 yeah. hours maximum. So it's a very tedious work, Arif. And I advise the people to read the PDF very yeah. well. Yeah. Usually, all journals will send your article for PDF. Why? Because there can be major changes, especially in tables. I remember I had a paper in accident analysis prevention. The whole uh, multilinear regression was completely spoiled, the paper. And then the tables has to be fixed. If that paper was published, it took us maybe six, eight months to do. And then if it was published in that shape, it was like a disaster for us. Yeah. So 
the amount of effort you put in it, the advanced methods. So please read the PDF carefully. One of the important things in reading the PDF, don't, people do not appreciate, check the surnames. So check your surname, check your affiliation. Why the affiliation is important? Because the institutions take credit for what you do. Yeah. And if you, you can even have two affiliations if you work for two, because that is, for example, in some countries like USA, is even related to funding. So uh, try to recognize the institutions. One of the tricky things that I want to advise people about the affiliation, if you do a work in, in an institution and, you, and then you go to another institution and you write the other the paper in the other institution, the other institution paid you for your the writing and thinking process, while this institution paid you for the hard work to collect the data. So you have to acknowledge both because you actually did the work during the whole process. But if you moved, to another institution, and you have done the whole work in the previous institution, you just change your correspondence to the new one. But the affiliation will be with the first, first one. one. These things are you have to be very careful about. You have to be to give every credit for everyone. Yeah. Uh, one of the principles is to be fair with everyone. And to be fair, you have really to give the credit for whoever gives you that. Now, once you get the PDF and you are happy, there is something called and th there are journals that are hard copy and there are journals that are not hard copy and there is a strong trend to be soft copies but some journals they call it like uh, pre-publication uh, pdf so that's online but then they publish it as a, as a journal and then they, they distribute it it's the same thing now but my advice always for uh, for my my young people always have a backup yeah. because sometimes the, the, the article may, the, the whole journal may disappear. Yeah. Uh, it may, you know, some journals, if they are not very successful, they close. Yeah. So they, if they don't deposit your papers, uh, you lose your papers. And some of our old papers are hard copies. So yeah. you have to get it from the main libraries. It's available there as PDF, but the quality you get in the printing is very good. So why not to keep a backup of all your work? And my advice for them is to organize it in sequence have a folder in which you can have put a hard copy and the hard copy should be similar to your CV. Yeah. Okay. So then you like archive your research. Why? Because sometimes you need to go back to your own publication. So you know where to find your paper and then you can, some of your paper is not open access. It takes time to bring the paper from the, from the, the publisher. He yeah. gives you certain access with certain time. So please have a backup of all your publications. And then advertise for your publication. How do you do that? I mean, I'm not good at Twitter. You are. And I remember how made you, you made the Kunafa paper by a paper. <laughs> People cited it so much simply by getting it into Twitter. I don't have that uh, expertise as you. But I try to, uh, what I do if I have a very good paper, I distribute it to my colleagues whom I know they have an interest. Of course, they will enjoy it. And of course, they can cite it. Uh, now, some journals also have an advantage, and I think you, you can have a PowerPoint presentation if you don't. I didn't do that because of limited time most of the time. I think it's very useful to speak about your work. Uh, you can present your work internationally. Or whenever I'm invited, sometimes they ask me to give an inv invitation about a topic. What do you like? I told them I want to tell you what did we do research in the last year. So I present seven, eight papers in a specific topic. So people will really uh, will uh, really enjoy what you do and you don't know what exactly you've done. Another important thing I want you to, to know, is try to promote your paper in the meetings. Whenever you're sitting and discussing, we published a paper, I remember which paper. So that means you should you know your stuff upside down. It's not like putting your name on a paper. You know everything about it. I know many times I say we published a paper on abdominal tuberculosis 1999 uh, about comparing CT scan and ultrasound in journal of clinical ultrasound. So you know exactly or I published this paper about mesenteric vein thrombosis, European journal. So try to promote your work and speak from experience. Whenever I give a talk, Arif, and I try to give from our own publications, what did we do? And only important articles on other opinions, I put them when they are applicable. So it's, it's a long process. And after publication, it is just you feel proud. But I can tell you, for the young people, be prepared for the happiness you see once you get your name on your first paper. Oh, that's a great feeling. You've been in like a big battle. You, you've been succeeding. 
And I think we want to encourage you all. But you look like proof, you know, every time your paper is accepted, you're happy as, like your first paper. <laughs> yeah, Ari, because I work hard for them. Really, I, each of them is a lot of work and the challenge. Most of these, really, we, we, we take challenging questions. Like, for example, does ATLS improve survival? And then, and then once you get to that, you really, uh, and I'll tell you this quotation if there's time. John Windsor is a very great man in Auckland. He's a very good friend, and I worked under his uh, leadership uh, for six years in New Zealand. And he sent me an email a few years ago. He said, uh, Fikri, I don't know why we have reached all, almost the top. Why we continue working like this? Why would you stay all day from 6 o'clock morning till 10 p.m.? Why? And he has the same problem. This is why he's asking him. <laughs> is this a problem? Yeah, and it's a pro yeah. But you become addict to science, and I, I, and, and I enjoy science more than anything. Yeah, you get euphoria in science. It's so beautiful. So I, what I wrote to John, I wrote him, John, if the people experience the feeling we have, once we solve a difficult problem, they will love it. So it is about like uh, working like a short columns. You try to find solutions, and if you're really having a wandering mind, trying, it's a great uh, satisfaction yeah. that you achieve by answering a difficult question. Can you say you're addicted? Yes, to one stage. But anyway, my my family is appreciating that. Yeah, I, mean, I know Arif, you know, science is very demanding, and the problem with science. Each research question brings Creed, uh, 10. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want, if you have a wandering yeah. mind, you want to answer the 10. So you need people to help you to answer these yeah. questions. And I can tell you, Arab, the, there is nothing that brings success better than success. And it's amazing. I mean, I mean uh, currently, I don't want to, I mean, maybe this looks like uh, unusual, but I'm now supervising four or five young people in France, Germany, uh, now Malaysia, they have very nice. Uh, nice paper going on soon. So people know that you can help them. You are happy you are helping people. Yeah. And they, 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 I can tell you, young people are good in bringing challenging questions. Yeah. Uh, they come to you and challenge you. And I like the people who so challenge they, you. So they keep you fresh all the time. Oh, yeah. And, and you made me so tired, <laughs> Arif. You are the guy who made me tired trying to, to cope up with you. But we managed to do a good job together, Yanni. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no, you, uh, you well, made it. Yeah, I, I want to string you. You are the guy who made me. You know, you remember, every time I send the paper to you, <laughs> under the door, midnight, next the morning, it's coming to my office. And I was... <laughs> because you said that I don't, I don't want to keep the you know, paper in my desk, so I don't want to... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Desk, so that, that's, that's a very point, Managerian point in all life. If you come to an office and you see the table is empty, you mean he's a good manager because he deals with the paper once. I, I took that in a, ma a management course. And this is why whenever I get a paper for editing, I don't want it to be on my table. Otherwise, people will keep on calling you and they waste more time than really finishing them. So you, s you bring it to me early morning, I want to give it to you at <laughs> night, and the next morning I find it in my office. This means you've been working all night, Adam. And that was an exciting experience, honestly. Yeah, thank you for Say the same for me. Prof, uh, we are coming to the end. Uh, we discussed many things, but do you have any other recommendations for future researchers? Uh, what shouldn't pay attention uh, if you want to say anything to close this all uh, series? Yeah, I will try to be short. First of all, you, you cannot learn swimming without swimming, so you have to put you, you have to put yourself in a situation to struggle to learn swimming. To learn writing. Uh, and the pillars, as I told you, you have to be honest with yourself. And honesty means you know your limitations, you know when to ask for help, and you know that you need to learn. You have to be very, very meticulous. Uh, and I, one of the things recently, I mean, even changing a cell in a multispirit like that will spoil the whole study. Just one small mistake. So you have to be very accurate. And uh, persistent, it's, it's a continuous learning process. I, 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 we are learning every day, and that's the enjoyable thing. If you, if you are a good learner, you enjoy research. Uh, if you like to think, you can enjoy research. Now, I want to warn people, I mean, about two issues and to give them the most great advice. The advice, one advice, and two warnings. The advice is please try to pick someone who is good in research so you can mimic him because the time to be invested in research is a very lengthy process 
And if you invest it in the wrong person to learn from him, you will learn bad habits. Yeah. And I, I like a quotation which says that a dwarf sees on the shoulder of a giant more than a giant. So, and I was a dwarf in research, honestly, and I want to acknowledge Professor Linkist in this, in this video, my great mentor. I could see the research in a different way. He really took me from my hands. I came from a small desert from Kuwait, small village. And he, he bought him and bought Iqlov, Professor Bo Iqlov. They realized that I like to ask questions. And they realized that I am really serious about what I do. And they took my hand and they taught me a lot. And I took that chance. But of course, if I haven't been trained by Linkist, I wouldn't have been what I am now. I wouldn't have been helping my colleagues. So I always say that the student, whatever he does, he will never be better than his, by his, his teacher. We are trying to guide the students but they have to respect their teachers and they have to learn from them. We are learning from our own mistakes and we don't want you to do that. But nature of students, they like to go and, and, uh, and really go and uh, explore themselves. So mentor, mentorship is always important for everything. Yeah, the, the other things I want to one of them, don't be overconfident. Yeah. Overconfidence kills you. And I can't tell you, that I learn from people, even my students. I remember a very young uh, Kuwaiti resident. I, he was under me when I was a senior registrar in 1990. And he gave me two talks. If I remember his name is Adnan Lianizi. I'm sorry if the name is not there, but he would remember that if he sees that video. And he was so hard working. He was young. And he, whenever I go with the patients, he goes around with me. And I told him, Adnan, why do you do this? You know, I, it's one glance I never forget it for now how many 40 years. He said to me, he told me, doctor, he told me, yes. He said, my father taught me something. He told me two people cannot learn, the arrogant and the shy. And I think, honestly, I like the word humble, even if scientists, you should be scientific. But being humble doesn't contradict with being scientist. We always learn. The other thing I, I really uh, want to, to warn them is once they become famous, companies will approach them. And I have a lot of companies coming to my, my office, a lot, Arif, and very strong companies. And I told them, I'm happy to collaborate with you in two conditions. If you can donate something to my students or support my research and not affect my decision. So it's a reality we have to deal with uh, fundraising companies, but our ethics should be higher than the money and gaining money. Because what we do, honestly, is for the community. We teach people for the community. We ask questions for the community. So please be humble. Try to learn all your life. Be all on life learner. Be careful what do you want. Because if you want money, this is research is not, it's not really, that you unless you want to invest in a company. And, but even so, you should behave ethically and scientifically. You will fail if you don't do that. Yes. So, and I hope, I hope this uh, will uh, really affect them, um, and they enjoy research. I enjoy research, and uh, you know, I decided now most of the time my time will be for training research and helping people in research. Uh, it's a long journey, but uh, I think. If you start it with one, as the Chinese say, the journey starts with one step. Yeah. So this is my encouragement. This is the time for you. You can start now. And I hope the advice was useful. OK, Prof, thank you very much. This is the 19th episode. And it was an amazing series. There are a lot of uh, life experiences you share. I believe everything we discuss in every episode is are very you know valuable uh, i think it will be very helpful for our students thank you very much thank you arif and i wish you success in your uh, in your uh, project i haven't the gut and energy to do such a project you are you like to help others and, and i you. hope this helped yeah, thank you thank you very much for accepting this thank you